Hello scientists, welcome to Drawbar Mad. Today we'll be drawing the 3D liposome, which is a very much anticipated topic. And uh, we will be using Adobe Illustrator, so uh, you don't need to use those very complicated 3D softwares. I'm really happy to find this technique because you can also apply it in Inkscape and PowerPoint. So without further ado, let's start to draw our liposomes. These are the liposomes that we'll be drawing and first I will show you how to draw this cross section and then in another video I will show you how to uh, apply an angle on it so you'll be able to see a different angle and uh, if this is the first time in my channel, welcome! I'm Scientific Illustrator John and I've been making these uh, graphic abstract tutorials here on this channel so the scientists like you can draw beautiful and professional scientific illustrations. So uh, we will start to draw our liposome and first we need to draw the lipids. So let's grab our um, Eclipse tool and then uh, hold shift to draw a circle and then I will uh, zoom in so we can work on it better. Um, I'll put it over here on the left. All right, and we need to fill it with a grady. Um, we'll need to fill it with the radial gradient. So uh, I'll activate the fill color control and then double click on the gradient. And here you'll find the radial gradient button. Click on it, and then you have a radial gradient. Um, we don't want it to be black and white. We want it to have uh, the blue. Uh, so let's uh, go to our color swatches and then I will grab this color and drop it into the color box. Um, okay, and uh, you, you will see that now it has um, uh, a blue gradient. <laughs> and uh, we will change the color of the stroke and to the gray that I usually use. It is the RGB gray uh, 51 in all uh, factors. And um, okay, so that's our phosphate head. And now we need to create the lipid and I will use a eclipse and then uh, then only extract the outline part of it and so we can First, I remove the fill and then I will select these two anchor points with the direct selection tool and then come here. Uh, you have the cut path at selected anchor points. So uh, cut it by pressing it. And now you have two curve lines. And um, okay, I will adjust my microphone a little bit so I can use my hand properly. Okay. Good. And then uh, I will make these two lines thicker. Uh, that's four points that I'm using right now. And I will scale it down a little bit so it will fit better to our phosphate head. And I will make it even a little bit narrower. Uh, all right. Now I will change the tip of the uh, stroke. So you go to appearance and then stroke tab, click on it, open it, and then click on round cap. And then you'll see that now you have the round cap on your stroke and that will make the lipid chain looks more organic. And we can now go to object, expand, to expand it into objects. And we only need to expand the stroke here because they are only stroke. And uh, okay, and now you see that you can uh, now apply outline to it, and also you can uh, insert color into the fill. And um, I will use this yellow over here to make the fill. Okay, good. And I will turn this one just a few degrees. So, um, and then I can delete this one and uh, I will then use the vertical, uh, the reflect tool and then flip it vertically. Uh, you can click on the copy and then you'll get a copy. And I'll move it over here. Um, I'll group these two so it will be easier to align them. And then I'll send this one back with the shortcut. I can I think we can make it uh, 
even closer. I think here I will let it even touching each other's. And then that's good. Align. Okay, now this is our lipid unit and uh, we have to do one thing before making it into a pattern brush. That is, we need to expand the, uh, the gradient in here. So let's go to Object, Expand. We only need to expand the fill here. So uh, let's uh, only check the fill and then I will, uh, I will expand it for eight uh, objects. So um, it wouldn't be uh, too many objects, otherwise that will be uh, that will make the file really big. Um, so uh, if you zoom out, then you can't really see that uh, there are some um, uh, like gradient lines in between. So uh, this is how you keep your file small. Um, okay, and now we can group all of them, and then I will go to the control panel. And then here you can find the brush definition. Open the drop down menu and then you can uh, add new brush here. So when you click it, then you will get this window and then we will select pattern brush in this case. And now you get the pattern brush and I will um, uh, adjust the auto between to a more natural one and also this one. Um, it's uh, very unlikely that we will, we will encounter this, uh, but I, I will still uh, set it up. Okay, I'll also give it a name that uh, it's called the main brain. Uh, okay, and I'll click on okay. Then you will get this brush. Uh, you see that I already made two over there, uh, but this is a new one. Uh, so now when you uh, make a circle, and then uh, we don't need to fill, I will remove it. And with the outline, when you apply the uh, your brush to the outline, then you will get the uh, one side of the little bit by layer. And so now we only need to create the inner part. So let's make a copy of it and then uh, scale it down. But then now you see that there's a problem. Uh, we our lipid chains are going uh, into the wrong direction. The inner ones, uh, their lipid chain should be pointing outward instead of inward. So uh, we will need to fix that. Uh, so instead of creating a new brush, there's a quick way to fix it. So let's go back to our brush definition. And then uh, we can make a copy of our uh, pattern brush by click and drag it onto the uh, new brush button. And then when you release it, then you will get uh, a new one. So you see the name of the brush is called membrane copy. Uh, double click on it. Then uh, we can edit it and we will tick this uh, flip across over here. And uh, now you see that the, uh, the lipids are going towards a different direction. And when you click OK, uh, it will ask you that uh, if you want to apply it to the existing stroke, then you will uh, say uh, apply to stroke. And then you see that the, it uh, automatically uh, adjusts the brush of the inner uh, layer. And now you have your lipids going towards the right uh, direction. Uh, so yeah, that's our lipid by layer. Uh, it looks uh, quite nice. And then um, we will create the uh, the inner space between the layers. So uh, I will just quickly make a copy of the outer layer and then remove the stroke. Uh, we don't need that anymore uh, because what we need now is a fill uh, of yellow. Let's uh, activate the fill control. Uh, by clicking on it and then we will go back to our swatches and click on the uh, yellow that uh, we are using and then uh, I will move it uh, in between the layers okay um, then I will send it to the back with uh, the shortcut 
And with it selected, let's go back to our gradient tool. And we need a radial gradient in there, so let's click on the radial gradient. And uh, it has removed my yellow, and so we need to put our yellow back. And uh, let's activate our swatches and then drag, drag the yellow uh, into the color box here. Um, and we, and I will uh, move the color, uh, the white box here uh, on the color slider. So it will start to go in between the uh, two lip layers. And then uh, I will add one more color box over here on the left. And I will fill a, uh, I'll fill the yellow in to that box. So, uh, and then you get to uh, get this um, gradient that uh, the outer gradient is um, yellow. And then as it goes in to the middle of the lipid by layer, it turns white. All right, then our lipid by layer is ready. Um, so I will group this. So they are, uh, they become one component. And uh, now we will need to add, uh, now we need to fill in the uh, middle space, which is the most crucial part for uh, creating that 3D effect. Um, so we need to uh, go there and grab our uh, phosphate head. And then, um, you know, I can do it one, uh, you can fill it in one by one, uh, but that will just take so much time. So uh, I will use the scatter brush to um, make the process quicker. Uh, so let's go back to our brush definition and uh, add a new brush while having the phosphate head selected. And this time we will create a scatter brush and click OK. And, and just click OK and then you'll see a scatter brush over here. Um, yeah. And what we will do is, uh, what it will allow us to do is that now when you uh, have, now when you have a, a path and then you apply the scatter brush, then the shape will be uh, scattering along uh, on the path. Okay, and uh, so this will be very handy because uh, then we only need to keep on uh, making copies of the circle and it will uh, generate all these phosphate head for us. That will save a lot of time. So you see that uh, I'm, I use a shortcut like copy and paste on top, which is control F. And then I will uh, hold shift and option. So it will just scale down uh, in the uh, according to the center of the circle. So uh, that can also save time. Okay, now you have uh, all these parts filled and uh, we need to rearrange the uh, the uh, the order of all these uh, all these phosphate head um, so it will look like it's going inward um, okay so first I will um, I will first uh, ungroup uh, the ultra lipids because we need this inner part to be the front and but uh, what I will do is I ungroup it and then I group uh, so I ungroup it and then I will select the outer layer and the inner uh, filling of the lipid by layer and then make them into a new group. So in order to make things uh, more clear when we are arranging all these layers, I will use the layers to uh, separate the inner part and the outer part because then uh, that can help us to uh, see all these things better. Uh, and then, I so I will select all of these. I will cut the inner part and then go to layer two and then use Command F or Control F on PC and then to paste uh, all these objects at the exact same position. Um, yeah, and now I will lock the layer one so uh, we it no longer can interfere with our process. 
Okay, now uh, now the layers are ready, and then we can uh, start to send the uh, la layers of uh, the phosphate head to the back. And uh, you can right click on it, and then uh, go to arrange, and then send it to the back. And there's also a shortcut that it can use. Uh, I will show it over here. So uh, you can just press it and then all of these will go to the back. So uh, now you start see that it is starting to look a little bit going inward and uh, we will uh, need to then apply a, a, a layer of uh, shadow on top of it. And that is uh, what makes this uh, theme 3D. Let's create a circle. that is uh, right on top of the uh, the inner cross section and it needs to be as a slight almost the same size of the uh, inner lip layer okay and now uh, we only need the fill we don't need the stroke and then uh, we will use the gradient tool and then give it a radial gradient gradient tool and then make sure that you are in the fill mode over here and then we will apply a radial gradient to it okay and now that's uh, and then we can go to the control panel and then open the transparency panel over here and then here you will find a blending mode drop down menu I open it and switch the mode to multiply all right, so now you see that uh, the uh, you, the black has been multiplied onto the uh, object that is underneath it, and uh, we will then move the, the inner layer to the front. And now you see that it is starting to create that uh, 3D uh, effect, and it is a little bit strong. So we will now uh, reduce its uh, opacity over here in the opacity transparency panel okay uh, don't do it too much because you still need to have that contrast and uh, okay and I'll, I'll make it around 90 percent and then I will uh, come back to the gradient slider to uh, just uh, adjust a little bit of the midpoint of the gradient and then make it uh, uh, more going towards the black uh, color box. Uh, so I will set it around, let's see. I'll set it around like 60% ish. Uh, adjust the uh, position of the gradient then you can uh, drag your uh, gradient handle to a little bit uh, to the uh, to the lower right yeah and and see now you have a very sharp contrast over there on the upper left and uh, that can help you to create more gradient uh, but also at the same time uh, we need to uh, uh, decrease the opacity just a little bit more so it will look uh, more natural okay good and uh, so now you can just uh, do some uh, adjustments to uh, really start to see that how sharp you want your 3d effect to be uh, just by adjusting the gradient then you can in some way like adjust the lighting of your um, of, on your onto your object. That's how you create a 3D liposome uh, in Autobit Illustrator uh, without using any 3D tool. And uh, yeah, I hope this can help you with your graphical abstract. I will make a follow-up video to show you how to turn it for a few angles. So uh, make sure you subscribe to Drawbound Mat so you'll see that. And also like and share this video if you find it helpful uh, for the scientific community. There's a Drawbound Mat helpline on Patreon where you can prioritize your uh, tutorial request. And also uh, if you need emergency help, you can also so find me there. I wish you all happy job on and I look forward to see you in the next video.